Hey guys, welcome back to Dog Forge. My name's Paul. Today we've got another build for you. This time we're going to go away from Wizards of the Coast material and we're going to take a look at Matt Mercer's fighter subclass, the Gunslinger. Now, this was homebrewed by Matt Mercer for one of his players in the Critical Role stream. And after one of my players coming to me, like wanting to play it and having read through it, I'm actually quite a fan of it. It's, I think it's handled well, and that it's a very high risk reward system between the misfires and how the trick shots work. So, after reading through it and being a you know quiet fan, I thought I'd throw a build together for you guys. So, let's get into it. So. Now, there, it does have to be said that a straight 20th level build would be solid. If you just went nothing but fighter, it would be a really solid build. But for some versatility and fun, quite frankly, um, we're going to be multiclassing in the lower levels. And that still retains its power. Arguably, I think it adds a little bit more to the build overall. So highlights, high damage output with a low dependency on resources. This is effectively a sharpshooter build. We do have resources in terms of, uh, we're gonna have ranger spell slots because we'll be multi-classing into ranger. And we have grip points. But overall, we're not overly reliant on those things. At the end of the day, our biggest resource is our ammo. And as long as we've got ammo, we're good to go. Now, another, I didn't realize this when I started out, but by the time I finished, it was a little bit comical, really. The initiative bonus for this class is so high. By the time you hit 17th level following the guide, you're going to have a plus 16 to your initiative count. Now, that is insane in and of itself. But since this is built on the fighter archetype, and as you guys, if you've seen any of the other videos, know... Quite frankly, we struggle placing all of those ASIs for fighter. If you just take the alert feat, which is something that you can do later on in the build, you're going to get 21. A plus 21 initiative count. That's insane. And we're going to have a few spells that are, you know, they'll be low level spells, but we're going to have a few range of spells to open up some versatility and just mix up our playstyle. So, our go-to strategy, and like these documents are always evolving, so if you guys think, you know, something works a little bit better or you want to see something different, let us know in the comments below and we'll revise how we lay things out. But for your go-to strategy, you're a gunslinger. You can't see my finger guns right now, but they're there, and your go-to strategy is to just shoot people. Now, we will be... It's a little bit cheesy, but still damn good. We're going to be a halfling. So for those that don't know, the weapons as put into this by Matt Mercer, they supersede the DMG firearm rules, and they have the chance of misfiring. So if you roll a 1 on all the weapons, you misfire, and you have to burn an attack to clear it. And if you fail at clearing it, then you have to fix it outside of combat. Now, depending on the weapon, some have a higher range, so you could misfire on a 2 or a 3. For the purpose of this build, we're going to be sticking with a weapon with a, re with a misfire score of 1. And being a halfling, if we roll a 1, we can just re-roll it. So, unless you are having a particularly bad luck at night and you roll two ones back to back, realistically you're not going to you're just not going to misfire. You could take Lucky with one of those extra feats if you want to make it a little bit more cheesy, but I I personally kind of draw the line there. So, Ranger does open up Hunter's Mark to us as well, which will help throw a bunch more D6s alongside the rest of our attacks. It's a really good kind of uh, tier 2-ish upwards damage boost that will help keep us consistent and competitive with the other big damage dealers. 
So here's an example of an attack. So at 10th level, assuming that everything hits and you're sharpshooting, the average damage for this would be 160. 60, 10, 90, that's combined modifier and sharpshooter damage, 66 from your hunter's mark, and 2d8 from hitting those dread ambusher attacks. Average of 160 at level 10. And it just gets better from that. So, hopefully you find that enticing enough. Let's crack on. So, our race is going to be a Ghostwise Halfling. As the amount of grit points, which is the... It's kind of the superiority die equivalent for the Gunslinger. The number of grit points we have, instead of it being a fixed number, is actually dependent on the modifier to our Wisdom. So we're going to want to boost that Wisdom score. So I've gone go put Ghostwise Halfling. For the Dex Wisdom combination, is probably one of my favourites, either this or the Wood Elf. But with the Lucky rerolling ones and the Misfire score, it was hard to pass up. You're going to get Telepathy. People forget Telepathy, including myself, on the Ghostwise Halfling. So... Don't feel bad if you need to write a little note to remind you to use something you've had since level 1. Believe me, I've done it. So, let me just put you up on the grit point section. There we go. So yeah, here's the grit. So you gain a number of grit points equal to your wisdom, minimum of 1. So technically you don't even need a positive wisdom to do this, but obviously the more grit points the better. And unlike the Battlemaster, you don't regenerate them just on a rest. You do, but you can also get a grip point back if you kill or deal a killing blow with a firearm. Or crit. So every time you crit, and every time you kill something, you'll get a grip point back. And that's really tempting to push you into using trick shots heavily because you do have that ability to regenerate the grit but it is a very high risk reward class in that some of the abilities especially the one i believe it's violent shot that allows you to increase damage increase your misfire score dramatically plus two for every additional damage die so i wouldn't really worry about running out of grit but i also wouldn't get pulled into burning grit all the time and becoming reliant on it. The only thing that I would really not mind being re like relying on are the things that I chose to suggest for this build. Dead Eye. You just gain advantage on the attack. It doesn't require even a bonus action like the Samurai does. And Piercing Shot will just let you make kind of a line attack. So in general just be careful of using trick shots. But for the ones suggested in this build, feel free to just go nuts if you really want to. So, uh, something to bear in mind, we are a halfling, so our speed is 25. But as we're a ranged character, we shouldn't really need uh, a particularly high speed. Keep on the fringes and 25 feet out. If you really need to, you can burn the action surge to move further away as a dash, but that's only an extreme thing. Skills, going to pick up Athletics to just patch that Strength, negative 1. And Perception, both from Fighter. Perception, if you are better at spotting creatures, then you're not going to get snuck up on, and you can actually set up so that you can open the encounter yourself. So, as always, as this is not trying to recreate a specific character, I will always recommend stealth, but otherwise, background and skills, how you want to play, and what kind of character you want to play. It's entirely customizing for you, and doesn't really affect how optimized the build is. So, let's move on to our recommended trick shots. Dead Eye, so I've already mentioned it. So you're going to get advantage on an attack. You Now, with all trick shots, you need to declare that you're using it before you attack. But advantage on an attack is great. And if you choose to use this guide as kind of just a rough guide or inspiration and you choose to mix in rogue, 
that's essentially on demand sneak attack. And piercing shot, especially in the earlier levels when you're fighting multiple enemies, piercing shot is just a nice way of trying to get off you know, multiple attacks before you really have access to extra attack and dread ambusher. So, into the level progression and play advice. So, so just a quick note on what guns we will be using. Uh, as we reroll ones, and I don't see any reason to really move beyond it, we'll be using the pistol for the majority of our career as soon as we can afford it after the palm pistol. Misfire of one, you have four shots before you need to reload, and at 150 gold, it's not too unreasonable to have multiple loaded ones to swap out between. The pepper box does give you another two shots, and it does have a better range, for some reason. I don't know why a pepper box in reality would have a better range than a pistol, but beyond the point. I don't personally think that extra chance of misfire is worth it, since you're not gaining a damage die. I would stick with the pistol, re-roll those ones, and just be smart about how you swap out your guns and keep on top of the loading. But before we are a gunslinger, we are just a lowly common fighter. Fighting man. So. 1 to 6 we're going to be straight fighter, so at level 1 we're going to take archery as our fighting style, clearly, and we'll be using the short bow. As a halfling we are going to be unable to use heavy weapons like heavy crossbow, longbow, without being at disadvantage. So I would say just use the short bow to start, and I would go with the short bow over the light crossbow because at level 2 when you get your action surge you can't fire two shots with the crossbow unless of course you have a um, crossbow expert getting to level 3 it's time to get down a brass tack and it's time to do what we came here to do we're going to take gunslinger as our subclass and deadeye and piercing shot as our trick shots if you can afford a pistol at this point definitely do it if not You've only got one standard attack, so make a do with a palm pistol, but definitely move to a pistol when you can. When you do upgrade, the palm pistol is still good as a backup one. So, level 4, we're going to get our first of so, so many ASIs. We're going to bump Dex and Com by 1, so we're going to get a plus 4 and 2 respectively. A nice little hit point boost and more damage and accuracy overall. And we're gonna. This is the first time we're gonna start to see that initiative start to creep slowly higher and higher. Level five. We're gonna get two attacks per round. And hopefully you have a pistol at this point. Otherwise it's gonna be a little awkward drawing and uh, dropping all of those standard palm pistols. And we move through to level six, and we're gonna take another ASI and trade it for a feat being sharpshooter which is going to be one of the core mechanics of this build so you're going to get to be able to shoot a long distance and snipe with your pistol and you're going to be able to get around cover as a ranged centric class those two passive abilities really do just up your game and allow you to circumvent some of the ways that a DM might normally mix up combat half cover and three quarters cover are now relevant to you they can still, of course, pop out of full cover, but maneuvering and working with your teammates should negate that. So, sharpshooter, again, the, the big part of that is the extra damage. So for every sharpshooter shot, we take a negative 5 and we get a plus 10. So at level 6 when we get this, we're going to still have a plus 4 to hit with sharpshooter because of our plus four dex, our plus three proficiency, and our plus two archery. And as we go up, that plus to hit for sharpshooters is just going to get higher and higher. And if we really need to, we can use Deadeye to get advantage at will. Level seven, this is going to be our first level of ranger, and you don't really get anything here. Uh, talk with your DM and about 
appropriate favoured enemy and favoured terrain something that will actually come up in the campaign because if you pick forest and then you're in a cave or an arctic or a desert setting it's just not going to feel good as always if the revised artif artifice there's so many artifice videos sorry folks if the revised ranger is on the table definitely go for it speak with your dm it's just so much better advantage on initiative advantage on attacks which is going to save us so many grit points on the first round of combat if you go before somebody revised ranger is the way to go if your dm is okay with it and remember it is their choice broach the subject with them but be respectful because at the end of the day they don't have to allow it and they are running the game level 8 we're going to pick up our second fighting style you can either bump your AC with defense or I do somewhat recommend being prepared for not using your gun dueling would give you a reasonable damage backup um, maybe something like the scimitar so you're going slashing instead of piercing and mixing up your damage types we're also going to get cure wounds and hunter's mark as the recommended spells hunter's mark is going to nicely boost our damage and let us utilize that bonus action that so far we've been neglecting level 9 here we're gonna take gloomstalker as our uh, as our subclass of ranger so we're gonna get dark vision we're going to get a wisdom bump to our initiative. We're going to get a speed bump on the first round of combat. And in the first round of combat, when we attack, we're going to get an extra attack that, if it hits, does an extra d8. Now, something I didn't realize initially, like when I originally made the John Wick video. But if you action surge on this turn, you will trigger Dread Ambush's attack again. Meaning at level 9, when you get this, you can action surge for six attacks two of them with additional damage for free so if you really wanted on those attacks you could drop sharpshooter to make sure that you hit and you still have that bonus damage and at this point level nine our sharpshooter shot should be a plus five so we're going to max out our ranger dip so we're going to take level four and ranger and we're going to max out our decks taking us to a plus six sharpshooter damage and a little tiny bit more damage. Level 11 is going to be back to fighter. And from a level 11 to 20, we will be going straight fighter to round this out. Quick multi-classing note at this point. It is kind of tempting because you have a high enough wisdom as a prerequisite to take a level of forge cleric to get a plus one magic gun. Now, whilst that is great for overcoming the um, non-magical weapon resistances that you may encounter, and the small bump to damage is always welcome, and getting more likely to hit those sharpshooters are definitely nice, please bear in mind that you will be changing guns quite regularly, and there is a feature in the subclass for that purpose because of the reloading. So if you want to get that magic gun, that is really the only time I would recommend upgrading to the pepper box instead of the pistol. So that you get those extra two bullets without needing to reload. Because otherwise you're going to be finding yourself using your magic gun for not even the entire Nova turn. Unless you want to lose an entire attack. And then you have to pull out another gun to keep going. So just a quick note, I personally wouldn't do it, but if I did, I would go pepper box just to compensate. But back to the build as is. So level 11 fighter, we're going to get our 7th level feature, which shall be quick draw. So now you can add your proficiency bonus to initiative, and up until now we've had a really good initiative, and now we just have a stupid initiative. Dex plus Wisdom plus Proficiency, our initiative is going to be crazy high. And if you want to take a look later on, just just ask the DM sometimes, as a joke, if you just want to just take top of the initiative, because realistically that's where you're going to end up. 
This will also add a little bit of mechanical support to your drawing of weapons. As you only get one interaction with an object, you can now with this feature draw and stow, so technically two interactions, a single gun per turn. So really helping you with that whole loading restriction. And as of this point, we really won't start feeling the loading issue with our pistols as much, if at all, really. Um, just a quick note that you only need one hand to fire a pistol. So you can always just draw a second pistol on either the first turn of combat, if you already had one out, or whenever you need to, really. And then you can take two turns to stow and draw a, sec like a second pistol for the dominant hand. A little convoluted in how I said that. Basically, you can dual wield pistols to help get around the interaction with an object before this level. Uh, and our initiative, just for reference at this point, is plus 12. Plus 12. Which is a nice little segue into level 12, another fighter ASI. We're going to bump our wisdom to a plus 4 for another grip point and a casual plus 13 to our initiative. Level 13, our sharpshooter shots go up to plus 7 as we get a proficiency increase. And we get one use of Indomitable to boost our defenses. Level 14, we're going to get Rapid Repair. Um, this is kind of irrelevant if you follow the guide as is, unless you're really unlucky. Um, and you roll two ones back to back. But if you've decided to go for a pepper box... Uh, like maybe if you've taken that cleric dip I spoke about, then this is going to allow you to clear a misfired weapon as a bonus action. So. Level 15. Now we're cooking with Blackfire Mayflies. The three standard attacks without any resources, four standard attacks on the first round of combat, and a Nova first round of combat for eight attacks. You're going to be making your little storm of gun smoke at this point, so we're not animals. Make sure you just wash that smell off. Unless you're playing a shifter, in which case we're still in civilization, presumably. Now, level 16, we're going to get another ASI. If you want more grit, bump wisdom. We don't really need to bump wisdom all the way. Um... It, it's certainly an option, especially if you're finding yourself using a lot of grit. But with how grit regenerates, I wouldn't really worry about it. So you could pick up Martial Adept at this point to drop some maneuvers, maybe Precision Attack, so you can get off those hits for sure. Or Crossbow Expert, which the, the reloading issue for Crossbow Expert is completely irrelevant, but the 5 feet disadvantage going away is a big, big bonus that helps take away a weak point of this build. And if your DM is okay with it, because as a DM and player myself, I don't see any functional difference, then it would allow you to use your bonus action for an additional attack. That's going to be nine attacks on an overround. Now, as your DM might find that as things getting a bit out of hand they might understandably decline but still the whole 5 feet no disadvantage thing would be nice to so level 17 overall we're going to get a second use of indomitable we are now even less likely for the DM to make us turn our guns on our companions because with higher level mind control enemies that would get messy very quickly Level 19, reloading is now a bonus action, so our choice of sticking with pistols, even in the end game, is not at all hindering us. We can draw and stow a new pistol, we can dual wield pistols, and if need be, with a free hand, mind you, you can't dual wield and do this, you can reload as a bonus action. A bit superfluous, in my opinion, for this particular build, but... 
if you went with the pepper box version and the cleric then this would be your capstone ability and it would be quite nice level 20 so we're gonna get another ASI so if you haven't maxed out your wisdom may as well I guess maybe you want some magic and you want magic initiate or ritual caster maybe you want a familiar maybe you want alert to just really 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 be ridiculous so at level 20 this is what we're gonna look like assuming that we hit everything and we average the damage of the dice we're going to do 8d10 plus 120 plus 8d6 plus 2d8 that's 210 average damage for an overround if you hit everything which between dead eye and if you took martial adept precision shot and being able to reroll ones it's not really that unlikely that you would hit everything This has been our take on the Gunslinger. I hope that you have found it quite interesting, to say the least. But hopefully you guys will want to give this a go if you get to play Gunslinger in any of your games. So, why don't you leave us a comment down below what you thought of the build, if there's anything you would do differently. If you like this video, give it a like. Maybe even share it with your friends. So hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell for our further videos, and if you have any requests or suggestions for future topics or builds to cover, let us know either in the comments section or on Twitter, and we'll be sure to get around to that. But in the meantime, I've been Paul, this has been Dogforge, and we will see you next time.